Glenn Hubbard probably does not mean to be a wet blanket here, but he wrote a really good column in the Boston Globe a couple of weeks ago in which he talked about our debt. And it's not going away, folks. Uh, improving markets, improving earnings, it hasn't made it better. Uh, he, he goes on to say that a pro-growth policy in this election year, I added in this election year, must include reform of the tax code, regulation, and energy policy with raising living standards as the key objective. Successful economic plans, think the Reagan economic plan or welfare reform, uh, emphasize what works in contrast to the wall that Mexico will pay for and Medicare for all slogans of this campaign. I wonder who he was talking about there. Uh, Glenn Hubbard, the former Economic Advisor Council Chairman for Bush 43, on that with me now. Good to see you. Likewise. It was a great piece and a very thoughtful piece, and I think you might have been referring uh, to Donald Trump on the wall thing. I think you might have actually been referring to both of the Democratic candidates and a couple of the Republican ones in the initial team on, on Medicare and all that. But this idea that they're very big at talking about getting government under control, not so good controlling it. Well, that's right. I think in the campaign, you're seeing proposals that would actually make the debt situation worse. Both uh, Mr. Trump uh, and Secretary Clinton and, of course, Senator Sanders fall in that category. We need faster growth, but we've got to rein in government debt. We've got to do both. No, we never do. And the only way to control debt, or at least the growth of debt, is to at least slow down the growth of entitlements. I know a lot of Social Security recipients, those who use Medicare, don't look at it as entitlement. I don't mean to besmirch or offend them. But the fact of the matter is these are massive programs. And, and we're just talking about trying to curtail their growth. Because left unaddressed, that's what's exponentially adding to this debt. Well, that's right. Unless we can control the growth in Social Security and Medicare, we can't invest in our nation's defense or education or research or infrastructure or reform the tax code. These are all choices. Again, unfortunately, in the campaign, Mr. Trump and Secretary Clinton have made it worse, not better. So what is the answer? Obviously, no one likes to be the bearer of bad news, and no one wants to share that bad news for fear that it will hurt them at the polls. So you still have the Democrats talking up a lot more spending, having the rich pay for it. You still have Donald Trump talking about, uh, you know, essentially a lot more spending with what some said would be a reckless tax policy. So I, I don't know where we're going to find our way out of this. Well, I think we will find our way out of it. You know, math has to come back. It may not be in the campaign, but it will be in the general election discussion and also in enacting new laws. Well, who would the be better of those to two then, Glenn, in that situation? You know, Donald Trump, and you know how the Heritage Foundation, all these other groups have scored his plan that it would be very expensive, add to our debt. They've said similar things about Hillary Clinton. In other words, they're not, they're not big on controlling this. But who is less of a pain for you in this regard? I think both uh, would have unwise courses for our economy. But who, but who do growth, you hate less? First. Who do you hate less? You know, I, I think they're really both pretty bad in terms of fiscal policy. My hope is in the campaign, both Secretary Clinton and Mr. Trump start to clarify their ideas. At the moment, the Trump plan alone would probably put the nation into a recession. Mrs. Clinton's plan would simply promote stagnation. Neither one of those sound great to me. You know, there's always the argument of the big tax cuts that they'll trigger uh, in this dynamic accounting theory, that they'll trigger all this activity, a boom will follow, uh, and we're off to the races. And that's what Donald Trump says is, is not calculated into these dim views of his, of his plans. What do you say to that? Well, of course, uh, real tax reform will improve GDP growth. That's one of the key reasons we do it. But tax cuts don't pay for themselves. There's still a net revenue cost of a tax plan. Mr. Trump's plan just isn't responsible. It doesn't mean, though, we should forget talking about tax reform. We really need pro-growth tax reform. I'm just not hearing about it in the campaign from the remaining candidates. What I am hearing, Glenn, is that, uh, for example, on the left, there's a great deal of creativity about coming up with new ways to get more revenue. A higher tax rate for millionaires, a much higher tax rate for those over $5 million. Uh, ingenious ways to get more money out of them. But no ingenious way to come up with with curtailing spending. All for the money coming in, not a lick for the money going out. Well, that's true. And there, the old notion that we could just fix waste, fraud, and abuse, you know, there's just not that much there. The, the real issue is the social spending program, Social Security and Medicare. And we don't have to make changes for current beneficiaries, but we have to slow the growth 
of those programs. Otherwise, we can't grow as a country. Taxes would have to be too high, or we'd have to cut every other kind of spending. That's the debate we need to have. We're not having it. And whatever changes we make, I hope it's for people who are at least one year younger than I am. Um, all right, uh, Glenn, thank you very, very much. Good seeing you. My pleasure. Glenn Hubbard.